um, you're welcome to our first case study uh, video though we'll be looking at we've we've been able to cover the aspect of plate tectonics in uh, so we've explained all the impact of earthquake volcano so we've done all that we've explained so this is the last part here it's a seven mark question in IGCS you don't joke with it case study is a seven mark question so you don't joke with it it's as important as any other thing so if you're writing paper one that carries 75 marks and you must answer at least three case study questions which give you 21 marks out of the 75 it's a whole lot that is how important case study is and i see case study as also an aspect you use to reverse certain part of the syllabus quickly because it also gives you a total review of the whole concept you've learned now for your 2.1 case study they expect you to know a case study of an earthquake and a volcano so you should look at the different aspect. They might ask you in an exam question for a name area you've studied, describe the impact of an earthquake. Then I ask you for a name area you've studied, describe the causes of an earthquake. So you should know there are two different aspects, but we'll look at these things. So uh, for a name area you've studied, describe the management they, they used to manage the earthquake. So these are the only options that might come out in terms of earthquake and volcano. So let's dive into it quickly. Now, an earthquake, Christchurch, New Zealand. Now, you might ask your name of the area. You write it this way, Christchurch in New Zealand. Now, it's a, an earthquake has happened in that area. So, the first thing you must give, you must give a general concept that will give the examiner an idea that you actually have a good knowledge of this place. Now, because this now have to do with causes. So, you see, an earthquake struck New Zealand, South Island, on the 22nd of February 2011 at 12.51 p.m. That statement alone will give you a mark. Now, New Zealand is located on the plate boundary between the Australian, which is a continental plate, and the Pacific plate, which is an, which is an oceanic plate. Now, remember, we are looking at courses. An earthquake and volcano occur around plate boundaries. Now, they've given us the name of this plate boundary here. So, Australian, continental cross, and Pacific plate, which is oceanic cross. Now, these plates move in two ways. They move, they are destructive and conservative. Now, if you want to describe the causes of an earthquake here, you already know that they are destructive and conservative. Conservative in the sense that if they, they slide past each other, which lead to the build up of which lead to friction, which lead to build up of pressure. Once the pressure is released, then it leads to an earthquake. Now, in the second option, destructive is when the um, continental plate and oceanic plate comes together since the oceanic plate is what is denser it has a density of 3.0 gram if in case you don't understand this aspect you can watch the part one video on plate tectonics it explains this whole process about continental uh, plate boundaries now the oceanic plate will move beneath the continental plate but because of that point of collision which now create uh, a region of uh, subsidence then once pressure is being released at that point it leads to an earthquake now the epicenter was 10 kilometers away from christ church that is the epicenter is the point at which the earthquake reaches the earth surface why focus is the point at which it is it, it get generated the second highest populated city in new zealand so obviously if that is the second highest populated city in New Zealand, then this earthquake will now have a major impact. Now, the magnitude the, is magnitude of 6.3 on the righteous scale with a shallow focus earthquake of around 5 kilometers below the surface. Now, you've described it. This description, if they ask you for the causes of earthquake, will give you at least a 7 mark. Now, Moving forward, you see, this is a map. I want to use it to explain it in detail. Now, you have the Australian plate. Sorry. You have the Australian plate and the Pacific plate. And this here, you have Christchurch. So, Christchurch is located somewhere here. And both these plates are the major cause of the earthquake. Now, they said it's also a constructive, uh, sorry, it's a destructive and uh, convergent um, conservative plate so if you look at the arrows here you find that that they are moving side by side each other so for them to be moving side by side each other then there is a build up of friction and this build up of friction can now lead to 
uh, 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 build up of pressure. Now, the pressure, once it's been released, can lead to a uh, massive earthquake. So that is why there are high distribution of earthquake within this region because of the pattern of plate movement between the Australian plate and the Pacific plate. Short term effects. Now, this diagram is uh, uh, it's taken up from um, Christchurch. So you can see how devastating, devastating it is. Now, from this diagram alone, you can state some impact of earthquake. Now, it destroys the buildings. It leads to destruction of buildings. It leads to destruction of roads. It will now destroy vegetation, loss of lives. Now, all these are impact of earthquake. Now, you can sort that impact from here. It can lead to secondary effect in the sense that uh, buildings need to be re reconstructed. People will lose their homes, so there will be more homeless people. It can lead to uh, uh, waterborne diseases because it will affect most of the uh, water pipelines and the pipes that is used for distribution of water within that area. So, now the major short term effect 181 people were killed in Christchurch earthquake. Over half of the death occurred in the six story Centerbury television building when it collapsed and caught fire. Six story building, more than half of the death. That means more than 90 people died in that building. Over half. Now, approximately 2,000 people were treated for minor injuries and 80% of the city was without electricity. So all the pipeline, or sorry, all the uh, electrical lines that helps to deliver, um, distribute electricity within the city were also destroyed as a result of this earthquake. So 80% of the city was without electricity. Now, long-term effects. Now, although many buildings did not collapse, some were demolished because they were unsafe 10,000 houses would need to be rebuilt that's a long-term effect could no longer host the rugby world cup they were supposed to host the rugby world cup in 2011 but because of this earthquake they did not host they were unable to host the rugby world cup now overall economic cost this earthquake cost the economy of new zealand 3.5 billion New Zealand dollars. There, that's serious cash. Okay, management. So if you are asked, describe the management of earthquakes. So we have short-term management, we have long-term management. Short-term management, a full emergency response plan was in place within two hours of the earthquake happening. Within two hours of the earthquake happening, there was a full emergency response plan. This is a more economically developed country. It cannot be done in a less economically developed country. We'll be waiting for foreign aid. Now, the Australian and New Zealand police enforced condones and organized evacuations. 27,000 chemical toilets were flown into the area as sanitation and sewage work were damaged. Because of sewage and sanitation, uh, and sanitation that were damaged 27,000 chemical toilets we have flown into the area for the people to use now we have a long-term management now insurance company paid 898 million dollars in building claims text message alert system we have put in place buildings reinforced with flexible steel that moves with the ground during an earthquake, so it will not collapse. So they now have to construct earthquake-proof buildings. Use of monitoring equipment to detect movement of plates so that there will be early evacuation of people before it occurs. Now, a volcano. I'm pronouncing this word is quite a very big problem for me, as not just in, as, as an individual. I, I've tried so many times to pronounce it, but I, my student end up helping me to pronounce this particular word, whether it's a jab, a, sorry. So just know that earthquake called this took place in New Zealand. It took, sorry, it took place in Iceland. <laughs> so you need to learn the spelling. It's, it's very important. Now, causes uh, of this earthquake in New Zealand, you see, it is... Iceland is located uh, at the mid-Atlantic range. Now, between the North American and the Eurasian plates. 
So you see now, we are looking at, you cannot describe the cause of an earthquake and a case study without stating the plate. So in this case, it is between the North American and the Eurasian plate because they move apart. So the North American plate here and the Eurasian plate, from the diagram you can see, they are, with the arrows, they are all moving apart. Sorry, I'm coming, please. They all move apart, and as they move apart, this leads to a constructive plate. Now, with this, you see how important this case study is. With this case study, we've been able to revise the three types of plate, constructive, destructive, and conservative. We looked at destructive and conservative when we were talking about uh, uh, the New Zealand, Christchurch, New Zealand earthquake. Now, the North American and Eurasian plates move apart, and moving apart is called a constructive plate. Now, once they move apart, then magma will erupt from where? The mantle to fill up the space to create a new plate. Now, that's why the name constructive is there in the first place. Now, the destruction, the destruction caused by the earth, this volcano was the result of a series of small volcanic eruptions starting on the 20th of March and ending in, the, in October of 2010. So it happens in 2010, from 20th March to October. See how long it is, because it's a constructive plate boundary. Uh, uh, so it happens like this. So now, you see, these are the small, these are at smaller volcanic eruptions within this area. So the major one is this volcano. Now, what is the short-term effect? The 150 meter thick ice cap melted. Remember, constructive plate is volcano within a constructive plate is not that a destructive plate is what is more violent. In constructive plate is not violent, so you don't expect much impact or effect. Now, so you see, but however, the 150 meter thick ice cap melted in Iceland which caused major flooding to much of the Iceland infrastructure. So because of the heat from the volcano. Now, zero reported death. Airspace closed around Europe. The airspace closed around Europe with at least 17,000 flights a day being cancelled because of the volcanic ash into the cloud. Now, long-term effect, the eruption cost insurance, insurance $65 million to customers with cancelled flight. Ma, that money is serious. Now, management, short-term management of the Icelandic earthquake. The emergency service, uh, the emergency services were prepared with advanced equipment. Iceland had a good warning system with texts being sent to residents with a 30-minute warning. Large section of Europe, European airspace were closed down due to ash spreading over the continent. While we have long-term effect, the earthquake has often triggered her larger sister, which is volcano Katla to erupt after so as a result scientists are monitoring her closely insurance companies and airlines have reviewed their policy to customers some airlines have built ash monitoring equipment onto their aircraft for more safety now that's it about uh the case study you need to know in relation to plate tectonics so if a plate tectonics question comes out there will be no case study outside what we've discussed so we'll look at past questions though so when it's time for us to look at past questions we'll now still make reference to this have a nice day thank you bye